knowing what you know about these ad networks and the dark arts here, what percentage of clicks on the internet, writ large, across everything, is, let's say, uh, fraudulent or bot? If you had to pick a percentage or a range, uh, what is what is the industry's take and what is Zach's take? I mean, it's a big number. Um, it the most of the fraud occurs traditionally, and this kind of actually open this is this opens a can of worms. Most of the fraud traditionally occurs around unmeasurable areas. So think mm. about a click. You know, in when you measure by the click. If I drive 100 clicks to your website, you see those 100 clicks come through that URL string. Those users show up. Now they're on your website. You can see what they do. You see how many of them purchase. And then you basically say, okay, I paid you $1,000 for those 100 clicks. And I got $10,000 in sales. My margin is 20%. Therefore, I made $2,000 in marginal dollars. Therefore, I'm happy to have paid you you know, $1,000. Um, and if they send you 100 clicks and 100 of them are fraud and you get no dollars in sales, you're like, hey, by the way, I'm not paying you for those clicks. And right. so with a click attribution, you can pretty clearly delineate what is truly um, effective and what's not. Now, when you move away from clicks, that's where fraud starts to occur. Because now I can basically send a bot over to your website and you don't know where they came from. And Google's like, hey, we, we claim credit for that purchase, but you don't know what they saw. And so like, it gets really smushy. So mm-hmm. most of the fraud is attacking traditional stupid TV advertisers who go buy, you know, video ads online. And you see it all the time, right? You're on some shady ass website and like 10 different pop ups show up with all these autoplay videos. And it's like total spam. And like each of those, each of those advertisers is getting ripped off and they're doing the same thing with their bot traffic and they're driving it at that, at that, of those videos at very high levels. Um, the total percentage of the internet. I don't know. I mean, I don't have access. It's a big number. It's it's billions yeah. and billions of dollars of fraud every year. And what the um, resolution to this is, is every system has some fraud. The credit card network has some fraud. And can the advertisers, the publishers, and the ad networks agree at the end of the day that the fraud is manageable? And as you're saying, if you sent me 100 clicks... And it netted me 2000 in profits at the end of the day. If 10 or 20% were fraudulent clicks, I'm blending that into my cost per click. I'm blending that yeah. into my ad spend, just like a restaurant or a tire shop. My or a catalog person might be like, Yeah, we're gonna have two or 3%, or a credit card company say, Yeah, that's gonna be 2%, yeah. 1% fraud. And if you want to, you can pay a higher percentage for your credit card fees to not get signatures, not look at the card. If you look at the card, you know, you uh, can pay less. Like, I think that's why when you get coffee, they never ask you for your credit card or your ID. And when you buy a flat screen TV, they ask you to see the actual credit card, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, Yeah. It's, it, you know, what happened, what's the unfortunate thing is that it's the unsophisticated advertisers who get ripped off here. So if you're, you know, an old school brand and you hire a stupid agency, they're going to waste your money. You're going to get taken to the cleaners. Mm -hmm. If you're like a small advertiser and you're not sophisticated and you don't have good technology, you, you get taken advantage of. So it's not that the fraud is evenly distributed. Like sophisticated advertisers know how to measure and manage and deal with it. And they can, mm-hmm. they can identify the vendors who are, who are driving a lot of fraud and they get rid of them rapidly. Um, the unsophisticated folks, they get taken to town. And it's it, most of it's a lot of these old school big brands. You just see like, you know, the, the, just big old dumb stupid brands and they just they just lose money. Uh, it's so right. interesting that they're not building up their internal capability because you know, you hire young folks who are super tech savvy, who are coming into the space, you know, as digital natives, and you just say, Listen, figure out how these networks work, run a bunch of tests. It, you could build this muscle internally. It's strange that they don't, given how important these channels are to them. I mean, it's, eh, the problem is, is that historically, you've got these CMOs who are old school TV guys, and they've been doing TV their whole life, and that's how they think about the world. And digital is, they've never really figured it out. And, but they've got to move money into digital because they, they have to look like they know what they're doing. And so they're, they go to their agency and they're like, good, spend X percent on digital. Because they can't mm-hmm. go to their board and be like, well, I can't spend on digital because I can't figure it out. And so, mm-hmm. and then these agencies, I mean, they're, a lot of them are good at TV and not very good at much else. And so they just take the money and they just dump it. They're like, they go to their vendors and they're like, eh, just go spend it. 
and the money just gets spent doing dumb stuff over and over and over again because it's the, the budget thing so is, big. Yeah, both of those paradigms seem to be ending. The paradigm yes. of that CMO is coming to an end; yes. they'll retire at some point, uh, and then uh, we have a um, a very interesting thing happen. I don't know if you're experiencing this, but I am inoculating myself to advertising. You know, Hulu has a no ad product. I have YouTube with Pro with no ads. Netflix and Disney and HBO Max do not have ads. I would say that's the majority of my media consumption right there. And yeah, the idea yeah. of me watching ads, and oh, when I pay for NBA League Pass, I paid an extra 40 bucks a year, I think, to not okay. have ads, but show the local cameras in the arena. And my God, it was the best decision I've ever made. My kids do not watch advertising. Yeah. Um, it just doesn't happen in our household. And it, what impact will that have over time? And do you think that that's going to be a trend where consumers just pay that incremental dollar to get advertising out of their video streams? I mean, Jason, the one thing you seem to forget is you're rich and not everyone else that's is true. rich. Yeah, so most consumers still pay nothing and they Got still it. get advertised to. But the, yeah. the best way to think about it is you have a continuum. So like in the continuum, you have on one end, you can think about it like TV commercials. So when you watch yeah. a TV show, it's 30 minutes, but it's how many minutes of oh. sight sound in motion it's like like over 12 i think it's 12 right now uh, yeah i think in an hour it would be over 12 yeah i think it's usually when i watch a 30 minute sitcom it's yeah. usually 21 to 24 minutes and yeah. that means that would imply six to nine minutes of ad so double yeah. that for an hour 12 and that's to 18 full interruption sight <sighs> sound in motion where you literally are sitting there watching like commercials attempting to brainwash you but you and I can remember TV ads we saw when we were kids. Like I can yeah, remember Hulk Hogan's TV ads. I can totally. remember like the 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 um uh the My the? Little Pony, My Bud Little Bull. Pony. Um but, like or um I mean like so so we oh. were effectively brainwashed when we were kids because back then we watched television commercials. And then on the other end of the continuum, you can think about like a data driven ad that really knows you. So it mm. knows what you buy, it knows where you live, it knows like yeah. everything about you. And that data can be used to deliver really valuable, useful stuff to you. It can be like, hey, here's the thing that we know you want and that you will buy. And you're like, oh, I want that. And you buy. And those become so good that you don't even notice them as ads anymore because they, they enter into your life in a way that's useful and provides value. And so on that continuum... TV commercials, no data. And so they have to interrupt, you know, a third of your life and just brainwash you. And on the other end, it's like, it becomes almost like it doesn't interrupt you at all because it's so valuable to you. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be all interesting right. to see how it plays out. Micro Acquire is a startup acquisition marketplace that cuts out the middleman. Basically, that means they help startups get acquired efficiently. If you've ever had to buy a company or you tried to sell your company, there's all these people in the middle. They're not looking out for you. Microacquire is looking out for you. To date, Microacquire has helped hundreds of startups get acquired and has facilitated hundreds of millions of dollars in closed deal volume. Over 100,000 buyers are on the platform right now. It's amazing. I signed up for it. I paid for it. Now they're an advertiser. It's crazy. Thousands of startups are currently listed for sale on the site. And they've had hundreds of successful acquisitions so far because they vet all of the deals they're putting up there and they vet all the buyers. Founders get free and instant access to these 100,000 trusted buyers while staying totally anonymous. This is not like an open marketplace. If you're a founder looking to sell, MicroAcquire is free, private, and involves no middle men. On the other side of the marketplace, buyers simply pay $290 a year for access to the platform like I did. Because I might buy some stuff for Inside.com. Micro Acquire helps startups find buyers. Simple as that. They'll help you start conversations that can lead to an acquisition in just 30 days for free at try.microacquire.com slash twist. Try.microacquire.com slash twist. Go ahead, founders, and check it out. And if you're an acquirer or you're looking to beef up your startup's footprint, you really should just pay the 290 and peruse and see what you could buy there. It's a really cool service.